Now we got our uh, legal extraordinaire, uh, Nathan McPherson. I always mispronounce his name. He's a second generation constitutional attorney and a tax defense attorney. And the good thing, he lives right here in the valley. So if you have any constitutional questions or uh, tax defense questions, he's your man. Uh, he was recently uh, in Brazil. Uh, you can notice the, the, the nice uh, skin tone. He flew up here from Brazil just to speak to us today. So uh, this is the, the, his, uh, you should hear his, the amount of work he had to, to go through to go from the Atlantic coast of Brazil to uh, here to uh, do this presentation. So thank you very much. I give a big uh, welcome uh, of applause to Nathan McPherson. Thank you. And I want to make sure everybody has the handout. So if anybody doesn't have my handout, it has a similar title slide to this on it. Raise your hand, we have the extras here. Yeah, because I have a limited selection of slides up here, so all of the content, the footnotes, the citations to the Supreme Court cases are in my handouts. Pass them out. And I'd like to revisit, if I may, the question asked by Representative Reinbold when we started. Why are you all here? It's, it's late, it's been a long night, you're still here, thank you. Why are you here? Why did you come? For your child? For our future? Wow. Behind a year. Yes, sir. Amen. I want my republic back. Amen. I'm with you. And anybody else? Worried about the grandkids. Worried about the grandkids. Thank you, Earl. Thanks for coming. Worried about, worried about my property taxes going up. <laughs> that's, a, that's an interesting. I just spoke in uh, Delta Junction where they don't have any property tax. That's where we need to be. Well, I, I like this valley here, though, so we need to, we need to no, get our republic back. We need to be in the same oh, well, we, <laughs> we can talk about that afterwards. Uh, let me tell you, if I may, why I'm here. Why did I fly back from Brazil early? Uh, that's my father, West Point graduate, Green Beret, Airborne Ranger Infantry, class of 67 from West Point. Uh, I was born on the anniversary of D-Day, 1979, June 6th, the same day he made major and Major Mack was a title given to him by the newspapers. The next week he was up here in Anchorage. I was born in Phoenix, Arizona. He was up here the next week when I was one week old and won a criminal defense trial, tax trial in Anchorage. The following week he won another one. The week after that he won his third back-to-back -back tax defense trial and went on to, to try, I think, nine cases in Alaska, two in Fairbanks, uh, he was representing the Patriots in Action, represented the only guy in Alaska to ever be tried with failure to file an Alaska income tax return after it was repealed, because we all know now there, there is no <laughs> Yeah, the guy was tried after it was repealed. And uh, my mother as well, uh, in those years, was fighting the infiltration of secular humanism into the schools in Arizona. They imported administrators from Chicago, sound familiar, Chicago, uh, in, to change the conservative Arizona school system. And uh, she, by the way, has a degree in elementary education. Both of her parents were school teachers in the public school system in Pennsylvania. Her grandparents were public school teachers. Uh, my brother, even uh, now, is the history department chair at Bethany Lutheran College in Minnesota. So I have a, a family of educators, definitely pro-education, and we'll be talking a little bit more about that. Another reason why am I here? I have three sons, two, four, and six. And I want to secure a future, a republic for them. And third, and this should actually be first, can somebody tell me what this picture is here? Anybody recognize that? That's George Washington, yes sir. And what's this book right here? That's the Bible. This is a picture of the laying the foundation of the nation's capital, George Washington with the Bible. Uh, our Father's God for thee, author of liberty, for thee I speak. I should have put this slide first, because I think we have a, a duty to God to proclaim his liberty in this land. And finally, the, the overarching thing, I think, would you agree, we're here to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity. And in fact, that's the preamble to the Constitution, the reason we have our nation's Constitution, is to secure liberty, to secure that republic. Article 4, Section 4 guarantees us a republic, not a democracy, a republic. <coughs> so a little bit, I think, would you, would you agree 
Uh, first of all, are we doing the Common Core in Alaska or aren't we? What, what do you say? Yes. Yes. Anybody think we're not doing the Common Core in Alaska? I, <laughs> <laughs> Commissioner Hanley, perhaps. I don't see any hands up in this room. Okay. So we the people believe that we're doing the Common Core in Alaska. Okay. Do we want to be doing the Common Core in Alaska? No. Anybody want to? No hands. Okay. Everybody either said no or didn't raise a hand for yes. <coughs> well, three things here. The Common Core violates the constitutions, both U.S. and Alaska, and federal statutes, state statutes. Obviously, we, we just learned, is it legal in Alaska to fund Common Core? No. no. Okay. So it violates that state law. It subverts the U.S. and the Alaska Constitution. What, what does subvert mean? How, how do we subvert the Constitution? Undermines it. Okay, very good. And it usurps parental rights, local control. And how about a definition for usurps? Steals the authority. Steals the authority. Exactly, sir. It steals from us unlawfully our authority. So first off, if you were in Anchorage, you might know the answer. But what am I holding in in my hand here? Anybody? A bottle of water. What do I want? Do I want to drink? Plastic or water? Water. So why do I have this bottle then? You need something to hold the water, otherwise it would be on the floor and I wouldn't be able to drink. It wouldn't be useful. That's the context without which the content is meaningless or useless, right? That's our Constitution. Uh, Representative Reinbold has, has said, it's the glue that holds our nation together. Without the Constitution, we have no nation, we have no state, without the state Constitution. What, what else do we see here from this quote from a Supreme Court case? Separation between state and federal government. Awesome. Awesome. Exactly. This separation of these two spheres, you are exactly right, sir, is between the federal and the state government. And it provides a context or a structure, structural protection, similar to this bottle, right? Of what? Liberty. So the Constitution is pretty important, and it goes without saying, I, as an attorney, took an oath to defend it. Representative Reinbold, any elected official in here or in Juneau, took an oath to not only uphold but defend this Constitution. There's the laundry list of violations, probably not exhaustive, but that's enough, isn't it? So starting with the Tenth Amendment, anybody in here tell me what the Tenth Amendment says? Okay. Any right not given to the federal government, but not forbidden to the states, is automatically given to the states. And the people. Right. So we, the people, hold the power. We delegate some of that, or give some of that to the state, and enum certain enumerated powers to the federal government. Whatever we don't, we keep. Right. What did President Jefferson think? Does the federal government have? authority, delegated authority, for education? No. no. Okay. But Congress maybe thinks otherwise, right? Oh, wait a minute. Congress agrees. We heard earlier tonight, the, the first speaker, there are three federal statutes that state the federal government has no authority over textbooks, curricula, testing, standards, anything. In fact, Congress held, and this is in your handout, Congress specifically held that parents have the primary role in education. Parents. And that states have a role in assisting the parents and the federal government only to assist the states. Yes, ma'am. So are you saying the Federal Department of Education is illegal? The, actually, it was the Enabling Act for the Department of Education that held this. That's one of the statutes. That it, it's in the handout. There are two from the 60s. One of them, ASEA. I, I forget now the name of the other one. And then 1979 under President Carter. It would seem that, that Jefferson would say that the Department of Educa Education is unconstitutional. That, that appears to be so. But in creating the Department of Education, Congress held that we have no authority over education. We're only here to sort of help the states. So. It's a fine line. 
I think Jefferson might uh, disagree with U.S. Congress at that time as far as the Department of Education, but not as to the role, certainly. The statute is pretty powerful in what it says. The federal government may not direct curriculum, et cetera, et cetera. But excellent question. And we all know if somebody controls the money, that person controls you and even can destroy you. Strings attached can be a matter of life and death here. The, oh, this guy was the Supreme Court Justice who wrote the opinion in Butler, 1936, the first case that held, where the Supreme Court held, the federal government, where it has no constitutional authority to act on a matter, may not use money to bribe a state Congress to do what the federal government doesn't have the authority to do. Again, if the federal government has no authority to do something, <coughs> it may not use strings attached to money to force a state legislature to do that thing. And we, we see here government reorganization, step one, Supreme Court revision, step two, dictator, step three. Anybody here remember the stitch in time that saved nine? You probably. It was 1937, so right after this holding, FDR, president, got a little bit upset with how the Supreme Court was ruling in favor of the people, and he said, you're going to rule the way I want you to, otherwise I'm going to yank you out of the Supreme Court. And this justice actually was one of the ones who changed course right quick to save his job. Who, who recognizes that gentleman right there? Sheriff Mack. Sheriff Mack, amen. Anybody recognize that guy? <laughs> <laughs> or, or that guy? Well, that was Ron Paul Delegate. Awesome, amen. Did you, you didn't get into the, into the convention, did you then? I don't know, there. Yeah. You, you got an awesome. Delegate in Tampa, let me tell you some more stories about that. Yeah, this, this was taken in Tampa at the Fall Festival right before the Republican convention. I, we saw each other then, without knowing. <laughs> Awesome. There was a lot of monkey business that went on. But, um, we have Richard Mack to thank for the Supreme Court holding that the federal government, where it has no constitutional authority to do something, may not bribe a state executive to do it. It's against Supreme Court law for the federal government, where it has no authority to act, to use strings attached to money to make a state executive such as Commissioner Hanley to do it. And on this point, anybody heard of Governor Jindal? Where's he governor? Louisiana. Louisiana. Anybody know what he did in, I think it was August? <coughs> Threw Common Core out. Yeah. And how? What's but he doing? Didn't take, didn't take your money. He's in federal court right now suing the U.S. Department of Education, claiming that what the Supreme Court said case holds, it's unconstitutional. These strings attached to the money are unconstitutional. And he, he claims one further thing. The U.S. Department of Education is saying, you don't have to do Common Core. You just have to do one, two, three, four, five to get the money. Well, the, the thing is, if you want to buy a Model T back a hundred years ago, you don't have to buy a black one. You can buy any color you want, whatever color you want. But if you go to the store, what do you have? You only got black ones. So, you know, what kind of choice is that? You can either get X or nothing, and you have to have something to get the waiver. Uh, but he, he uh, Governor Jindal, wasn't the first one to figure out that this is all unconstitutional. The general counsel and deputy general counsel of the U.S. Department of, Edu of Education under George W. Bush wrote a paper when Obama took office and they were replaced with the new people, stating it violates the Constitution and federal statutes, exactly what Governor Jindal says in his case, exactly what I'm saying in my presentation. So you don't have to take my word for it, you don't have to take the governor's word for it. You can take the high, two highest attorneys from the U.S. Department of Education, take their word for it, because I think they would know whether it's legal or not. So. Okay, the government, the federal government doesn't have the authority to do it, okay. But maybe, just maybe, the Common Core standards are really, really good. Any, do we think they are? No, okay. But let's just assume, for argument's sake, they were really good. So, 
what if the legislature or the state executive of Alaska says, hey, these are great, so we know federal government, you can't force us to do it because the Supreme Court has said that's illegal, but we'll disagree with you to do it. Would that be okay? Would that be lawful? What does this say right here? The New York case from 92. Cannot be ratified by consent of state officials. Now why do you suppose that is? Why did the Supreme Court hold that the state officials, whether legislative or executive, may not agree with the federal government to violate the U.S. Constitution? I mean, it, takes, it, takes, it takes Article 5 to make an amendment to the Constitution to in order to, to make that happen. You would have to have an amendment to the Constitution to do that. Correct, but what if they just agree to, to violate then, the Constitution? Then, then it doesn't, doesn't, doesn't fly. It doesn't it fly. It can't fly. Right, because, yes, ma'am, Rick? That's a very good point. Yeah, the Constitution outlives these officials. The Constitution has been around since 1787, the Bill of Rights since, what, 92? And so, you know, over 200 years here? Yeah. The, the, the ultimate reason being that the Tenth Amendment protects we the people from government tyranny. And that's, the tyranny is not just my word up here. The Supreme Court said so. Said it protects us from tyranny. The Tenth Amendment protects we the people. And only we the people may decide what's going on. The state has no authority to agree to a violation of the Tenth Amendment. So what if they do, like they did? What did the Supreme Court say about that? Cannot be enforced. Invalid. Because if something's unconstitutional, if Congress, U.S. Congress has no authority to do it, and U.S. Congress has no authority to condition grant money on either the state executive or legislature from doing it, and if the state officials may not agree with the federal government to go around this, because that's unconstitutional, because the Constitution protects we the people, then such a provision is invalid and cannot be enforced. U.S. Supreme Court's words, not mine. Anybody here heard of the Compacts Clause? I think you might have to be a real constitutional scholar. Article 1, Section 10, you mean? Article 1, yeah. Section 10, Clause 3. So yeah, we have a real constitutional scholar right up here. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. Uh, this states that the states may not agree with one another to do something without U.S. Congress approving it. And it kind of makes sense. You can imagine, otherwise the states will get together and agree to start their own country or something. So it also says they're not allowed to build armies on their own, you know, other than the, the federal army, etc. Well, what, what did Representative Reinbold say? We're spending four and a half million dollars to pay whom? The state of Alaska sends these checks to? Kansas. Kansas. Is that a state? <laughs> Maybe not under common core geography, but <laughs> at least under traditional geography. So we have the 49th state paying the, whichever state Kansas would be, some money. Does that sound like it violates the Compacts Clause if U.S. Congress didn't approve it? Have we seen that U.S. Congress approved it? No. Anybody want to? You know, go try to find that, but what, what, if you research that, what you will find is a temporary restraining order issued by a court in Missouri because the parents sued because Missouri is participating in one of these consortia, just like Alaska. And so these parents sued and said, that violates the Constitution. And you know what the judge said? Well, they issued a temporary restraining order. He had to, to, to hold that it, it sure does look like that. We, we'll know when the lawsuit's through, but for right now, it looks so sufficiently that they had to post a $100 bond to get a restraining order where the state is now legally prohibited from spending that money. That's in Missouri. Who's gonna do it up here? Who's gonna do it up here? Well, we have, we have enough parents here. <laughs> Thank you. Here's, here's the actual wording. They've made a preliminary showing of likelihood of success on the merits. That's the legal test to get a TRO. And if plaintiffs prevail, Missouri's membership in the consortium, SBAC, is unconstitutional. This is the judge, November 25th, 2014. So we have a federal lawsuit where the executive of Louisiana sued the U.S. Department of Education. And here we have a state lawsuit where the citizens sued. I'm watching you. Which amendment 
we talk about now we've moved on from the tenth to the fourth amendment yes and alaska's constitution of course has a similar provision but alaska even goes beyond the u s constitution in making it an affirmative duty of the legislature to protect your privacy representative brian bold and her colleagues have an affirmative duty to protect your privacy under the state constitution so what are they doing with p20 that's a very good question you might want to ask your legislators what they're doing if they have an affirmative duty under the constitution why are they data mining you we've seen some of the data mine do, do we think that this is a little bit invasive the data well you haven't seen anything yet what's arne duncan the u.s secretary of education who's the also defendant in that lawsuit of course you know, jingles lawsuit what does he say about little johnny do we have any moms in the room here do you like what he's saying about your little kids we want to track the students. We want to know whether Johnny participated in this, that, and the other. Okay, so, okay, if your kid's enrolled in a school, they're going to you know, know what classes. To, you know, you, you've gotten your transcripts before, right? It tells you what class, what grade, et cetera. That kind of makes sense, maybe. But what, what, what about here? His earnings as an adult. What kind of attorney am I? What do I, what do I, I practice? Tax defense, right? So I follow what the Commissioner of Internal Revenue the commissioner, not of external revenue, of internal revenue does. What does he say in his report here? The IRS partners with whom? With other federal government agencies? Internationally. Internationally. Hmm. Interesting. To exchange data, information, exchange data, share information with international governments as well as state governments in the U.S. So this came out just yesterday, right? January 12th. IRS launches International Data Exchange Service to track your data internationally. Maybe that's how they know what Johnny makes later on. We like this? Happy, anybody happy? Feel safer if you're measured? Is this the world we want? It's not the world we want in here? No? Well, this is the world they want. It says so right here. This is the world we want, a world that counts, where no one's invisible. That's why we moved up to Alaska, right? <laughs> to be tracked. No? This isn't the world you want. It's, he says here, this is the United Nations. This is the world they want. Anybody in here like this? No. No. People here against this? Hell yeah. You want your kids participating in model United Nations events? No. Did you know they are here in Alaska? Yeah, Alaska participates in a model United Nations where, you know, when I was younger, before I became an attorney, when I was still a high school student, I took mock trial, practicing how to be a lawyer, right? Well, now that we got mock UN, where you can practice how to be a UN guy. In Alaska as well as other states. Because this is the world we want. Agreed, international partners have agreed on the goal of universal civil registration. Proof, legal proof of registration for all individuals by 2030. We've got 15 years. So who can recognize this? Where, where's this church? Ninilchik, exactly. Yep, Russian Orthodox built around 1900. Uh, what kind of heritage do we have in this country and in this state? Would, would this be reflective of our heritage across? Yeah. Any problems if anybody learns about Christianity? Anybody object to that? No. no. Uh, how about we spend three chapters on Islam and maybe three sentences on Christianity? Yeah. Anybody object to that? Yeah. What does the Constitution say about that? No separation. Or... No, no, separation of church and state's not. It says no, the establishment no, 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 clause. I, didn't mean that. I, didn't mean that. You, I know you know. Yeah. I know. <laughs> they, uh, well, the Alaska no, they Constitution. Will not, they will not force a religion, force on you. religion yep. on us. or prohibit you from practicing it. Or Anybody been prohibited from practicing religion in school? Yes. We've heard some stories around the country, right? You, your students aren't allowed to take the Bible. Does the Constitution prohibit citizens from doing anything? A single thing? Any one thing? Nothing, right? It, <laughs> the Constitution prohibits the, the government from doing things, right? 
And the Alaska State Constitution has, in the Education Clause, says that the education must be non-sectarian. Is Christianity a sect? Lutherans, are they a sect of Christianity? Methodists? Baptists? These are sects, right? Christianity is not a sect, it's a religion. Interesting, huh? So, what if we teach kids that Muslims and Christians and Jews worship the same God? What if we teach them that Islam teaches that you should, it, it treats Christians and Jews nicely? <laughs> look, at, look in your handouts. Some examples out of textbooks. What if it says Islam spread because Muhammad was a prophet of God, wrote the inspired word of God, the Quran, and he was good at getting people to get along? According to David Barton, these events in these textbooks, and it's, it's in the handouts, were that they had committed genocide, wiped out, killed all of the Jews in that area, killed all of the Indians in India there. And that's how they coexist, because if you rest in peace, you're pretty peaceful, you can peacefully coexist. That might uh, perhaps violate the sectarian clause. So we learned that even the US Congress in 1979 held that parents have the primary role of education. Does the state have any role in education? Under the Alaska Constitution, the state must establish and maintain a system of schools. So there, there is, under the Constitution, a constitutional duty for the state legislature to establish and maintain a system to have access. And even President uh, Jefferson was for that. He was actually in favor of a basic public school system. Most of the founding fathers were we have some quotes on that coming up here. Does the federal government have a role? No. 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 Congress is pretty debatable, perhaps, to support the, the states in their role, but certainly crystal clear curriculum, standards, testing, no. Once again, Jefferson. So Jefferson agreed that there should be a system of public schools, but what does he say about textbooks, standards, curriculum, etc. Who should be deciding that? The parents whose kids are there. So, some kids in the, in the room here, do I care more about these kids in the room? Or does the mama? I'd certainly do what I could to protect your kid, but boy, if anybody gets between you and your son, watch out, right? So it, it makes sense, right? So we have some business owners in here. Anybody with small businesses? Okay. You think Juno should run your business for you? They'd probably do a better job. No. Well, that's what it says right here too, right? Just like we, it would be ridiculous to think Juno ought to run your small business to think that Juno ought to decide exactly what your child's learning. Juno needs to provide a system of public schools. It has a duty to do so. But, but let's ask we the people, where do we want, what do we want with education? You want Juno to decide standards? And that's not necessarily a question we need to answer right now, but it's a question you need to answer and let your legislators know. Do you want to go with what Jefferson said? So we learned again, subversive is undermining. So if we're undermining the Constitution, what are we putting back in there? Well, let's start with this one. Alaskans don't really care much about their guns, but <laughs> it's the only example I had. So. <laughs> what does the Second Amendment really say? People right to keep, the right to keep yeah. Shall not be infringed, right? Period. Pretty crystal clear, right? Shall not be infringed. Don't tread on me, right? What are they learning in school when they got common core line textbooks? Yes, sir. If you draw a picture of a gun, you're expelled, buddy. Exactly, and hopefully, Next time we have one of these, or at least by May, I'll have a, a book I'm writing about this, and, and that is in there. The Second Amendment doesn't simply protect your right to bear arms. It protects your duty to bear arms. And even the, the U.S. Supreme Court, this is the quote I have here, District of Columbia versus <coughs> Kelly, this is, or Heller rather, in 08, the Supreme Court struck down the unconstitutional 
gun ban in Washington, D.C. They're still fighting over it over in D.C. That's why we don't live there, right? <laughs> um, and in, in 2010, applied this to the states through the 14th Amendment, which is another just a legal situation, but held it was so fundamental that not only the federal government may not infringe, but also the state government may not infringe, and held that it is not for hunting, not for whatever, but for defense. Self-defense, defense of others, which is a, a God-given duty, right? Defense against a fear of terrorism. That's not what the common core people think of. Yes, sir. I saw, I saw something recently that uh, statistics on murder rates around the world in different countries. Yep. You know, who is, you know who is the lowest? I imagine here, right here in the Matsu. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's the highest gun ownership per capita. Switzerland, because everybody's oh, and, and they're trained, too, right? Yes. And they have military-style assault right. weapons, so they right? Raise, they they yeah. do. Everybody is mandated to be in the military for Correct. basic training. Yeah. Then you go home and you put your gun in the closet, you're mandated to keep care of it, oil it, clean it, yep. whatever. Right. And you keep it dry. Right. Yeah. They have almost a zero murder rate there. Yeah. We came in second. Okay, second. <laughs> so second to Switzerland, where they carry M16s around. <laughs> So the big question, though, is if is this, is this what this is what our, our kids are being taught right now? What the Second Amendment says. This is it, in some of the textbooks. If, very varying degrees that, of, of if, this. If that right. is what's being said, what the hell does it say about the First Amendment? Correct. What does it say about the Ninth Amendment? Very what does it good say question. About the Tenth Amendment. Yeah. If this is what they're doing, the Second, and we we have and the rest of examples it. that others are thrown under the bus as well. In fact, and how many kids even know what the Third Amendment is? Probably not too many. Well, we, we know from the riots that they don't know what the Fifth Amendment is. <laughs> Besides the Due Process Clause, it also says you have the right to uh, grand jury indictment before you're tried for murder. So that's the Sixth Amendment guarantees your right to uh, trial by jury of your peers. Do you have peers if this is what the people are being taught? Yes, sir. Maybe it's something that's noteworthy also, and, and I've heard this also on the news, but uh, you know, they're talking about the Common Core specifically saying that people have the right to Yep. And so they're tying that, they're, they're teaching the kids in this, in this new curriculum, they're tying that to the militia. Right. And, and not uh, case law, uh, such that the uh, uh, Supreme Court has, has ruled numerous times that it's an individual's right to keep and bear arms. That's an excellent point. Yes, it is your individual right. right. Not militia, not any other kind of military situation. Individual right. And what, what's this word up here? Grants. Grants. The document grants. I thought that we, the people, granted the federal government certain rights it's through the Constitution. Our Creator gave us these rights. We, we, that's was unanimous. That's that's self-evident, isn't it? Yeah. A truth that's self-evident. <laughs> we're endowed by our Creator with certain inalienable rights. But the other thing too is now, where the kids are also being told that the militia is the National Guard. Right, which is also not true, and we have that's where Sheriff Mack and some of his buddies can come in and. Have another symposium about that issue, but yeah, you're you're right. So, so if we don't have a God-given right, individual right to life, liberty, and property, instead we ought to just go home and sit and wait for food and everything else necessary for a comfortable life to be delivered to our doorstep. And the door, the doorstep, that door, and everything else is paid for by somebody else because it's our right. I have a right to have a house and food and clothes and everything, right? This is, in, in your outline, you'll see this is a lesson plan that preaches and teaches, indoctrinates, you might say, in the United Nations Universal Declaration of Human Rights. Because we can't have our Constitution, Declaration of Independence, our four organic documents to the country, we can't have the kids learning that. Then they might know that they have rights. And that all of the rights are derived from the people. Instead, we got to teach them this to be, you know, anybody heard the song, My Dad's a Soldier Blue, I'll Be a Soldier Too. When I am old, I'll come and rescue you, because you're going to need rescuing. That's the United Nations song. Do you have questions? Or? Yeah, I do. The, um, 